Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to number 19. Can you believe that? 19 live streams, and I can't think of a better place to have it than here with Eric Peterson and his amazing artist, Travis Nebaker. You know Eric. So we've been tracking the casting process of this piece all the way through, and I'm so excited because today is the day we get to do the patina. So you can imagine as an artist, as I'm working on a piece like this, all I'm thinking about is how this piece is going to look and read with the texture that Eric's going to do with the patina. And to me, that's when this piece will come to life is with the majesty and the magic that these guys produce for me as an artist. So Travis, it's all up to you. Eric, you want to talk about what Travis is going to do? Yeah, so we're going to start. What we've already done is all the chasing work has been done like okay. we showed a couple weeks ago. And the piece was sandblasted. Mm -hmm. And then we, we wheeled it up with scotch bright pads to bring the shine of the bronze out. Because yeah. we want that metal to show through. That's what gives it the depth and the, yeah. and the beauty. And so usually our first step is to turn a areas of the piece darker with a chemical called liver of sulfur. Like we saw two weeks ago, kind of with that one where you burnish back a little bit. Yep, we did a little sample. Yeah. So we're gonna have Travis is gonna heat this up and then show a little bit of the process of putting the liver of sulfur on this piece. The cat is mostly light, but they have some darker areas by their paws and face. Yes, yes. And so um, first thing though, we gotta heat it up. Yeah. So, so let's let uh, Travis do that. Okay, Travis, here you go. outside normally with a piece this size? Uh, actually, yeah. Okay. Um, but, and then we have another patina booth set up where we'll be moving to next. Okay. Um, but yeah, the one that we're gonna move to, he started outside, and then I already started the patina, so we'll be picking that up midway through. So I notice this is changing color as he's hitting it. Can he kind of determine by the color how hot it's getting? Yeah, just, just well, yeah when, when the bronze starts turning a golden color, yeah. that means it's getting nice and hot. Now for this liver of sulfur, he doesn't have to get it as hot as normal. Yeah. But um, yeah, we always say the bronze is usually heated to between 350 and 500 degrees. Okay, okay. And he's got to get a uniform heat somewhat because if there are cold areas on the bronze, it just pulls the heat away from the hot areas, correct? Yeah, that's true. And he kind of preheated it a little bit before we started this yeah. so we wouldn't have to spend so long. Yeah. But um, and, but again, for this liver of sulfur process, but it will actually turn the bronze a darker color with no heat. So you oh, don't okay. need a lot of heat yeah. on this part of the process. Yeah. So, so he's going to be working on the back area there by the legs. That's okay. probably enough heat for him. There. So I'll get, the, get the front heated up a little. And yeah. now what, what happens is we move to a, a smaller torch. Yeah. Let me get this handed to Gentlemen, Travis. we got Peter Schmidt from Goodyear watching, saying good morning. Peter, welcome. We're glad to have and you. And of course, Joel Peterson. Joel. Watching live, it's awesome. <laughs> right. Good deal. Okay, so there you can see we've got the liver of sulfur mixed up in a squirt bottle and a little jar. So Travis is going to start by brushing it on. So, okay, so it's turning dark instantly, and this is going to be like an antiquing, I assume, where it goes in the recesses. Yeah, and if mainly. you look at a, if you look at a photo of a mountain lion, you'll see that they kind of have a little bit of that darkness in their face. Oh yeah. In fact, and, I, and a stripe on the muzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, we have Dave North watching from uh, Montana, where one of the Simbas will find a new home. Oh, Dave and Linda, thank you for chiming in. This is so exciting for you to see this. Here's our actual, can you get that? Our actual reference photo yeah. that we were using to color the face. So you can see Travis is, is making areas dark, kind of the same as, as this. Yes. You can see exactly. the lighter parts of the cat are represented pretty well by the, yeah. the bronze color. One thing that's really changed from when I started doing patinas 24 years ago is is it sure nice to, you can just Google anything you want. Oh, true. As reference material. Yeah, with the photos and so forth, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so fun for me to see this because now I can already see the textures that I've put into that face being highlighted by the dark recesses. Yeah, exactly. 
And I'll just show real quick, after, when Travis is done, you can see we can burnish over the top of this, and that's how you can bring out those okay. highlights. Okay, do that again, yeah, there you go. So that really brings up the texture. Yeah, wow, so you can look see the that. texture showing through there. Now normally what we do is get all the areas back. Oh, and we're even gonna do some real, take a little brush and the, the wax uh, The eyelash. Yeah. Almost like mascara they have on. Yep, so he's gonna put that in there and everything. We so I know Damon Sue Lamb viewing you guys. Oh, good to from hear Prescott, from you. Tower, Prescott Valley, Arizona. Yes. And Chris Whitman. Yeah, Chris. Scottsdale. Yeah. Got a lot of viewers coming in. Thank you guys. So I noticed when Travis started heating this up, the bronze almost turns shiny wet like there's moisture being whipped out of the bronze. Is that what's happening? Yeah, the bronze is very porous and when it just sits around in a room, it's actually full of a lot of water. So the first thing that happens when we heat it is the water comes out of the bronze and then that's where our chemicals will it, fill that place and soak into the pores of the bronze. So it's amazing. It does really actually open the pores and it's hard to fathom that something as hard as bronze actually is porous enough to soak Oh, yeah. to get moisture in its pores. Yeah, definitely. This is, that's pretty amazing. Yep. So, so this would still turn black without the heat, but this, this actually uh, advances the chemical or the oxidation process. Yeah, it makes it stick easier, and also he can control it. You see, if this wasn't warm, as he put that on the ear, it would drip down the body. Sure, sure. But he's able to control where he wants the heat to go. Yes. So he's specifically outlining the outer part of the ear and the inner part of the ear yeah. where the mountain lion would actually be darker. So I'm going to turn this, Travis, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn this a little bit toward the camera so they can see the face of what you're doing. Is that okay? There you go. So what are you thinking about, Travis? What I'm thinking about when I'm working on this is what it's going to do to the final patina because like you were telling them already, the, the darkness underneath, even though we're going to burnish it back, it still will show the through in the final patina. And when we layer other chemicals over this... Turn the torch down, there you go. When we layer other chemicals over this, it will end up changing the color of the front of his face as opposed to what's on the areas that don't have the liver. So it gives it more contrast and variation in the final product. Exactly. So there's really a lot, on every step of these things, there's a lot of thought that goes into each part. Every one of them. Yeah, absolutely. And one, it's like dominoes. One step builds to the next, to the next, to the next. If there's a mistake in the first step, it's going to reflect through in the last, yep. I, would, I would assume. So if a lot of you watched this piece being molded, the wax being made, the entire lost wax casting process, but I don't think you've seen the pile of the puzzle that they have to put together when they receive a piece like this. So Eric, look at this. This is how you receive it. This yep. is an entire, that entire piece <laughs> in this how, one area. Yeah, this is how we get it. So you can imagine. We can. We have Kim Corey, our good friend. Oh, Kim, welcome. Say she never gets tired of watching the magic that happens with Patina. Yes. <laughs> so you can imagine as, these artists have to get this piece and put it all back together like we saw two weeks ago, welding it, grinding it. You can see all kinds of things that yeah. happen during the casting process, yes. little flaws and everything that comes out. Yeah. Patches in the legs. Yep. Sprues, yeah. all that stuff. And you can't see any of that, the welds or anything, on the finished piece. I mean, that was where that leg was. So Eric, on to the next step, we have Kristen. Yeah, let me, that's um, doing let me get this eased over here. We gotta get our big torch back over here. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you can start with the little one then. So Eric, we talked about all the many artists that are involved in this process. piece that you employ does work their own artwork in their own way shape or form yep. so that's what's comforting for me as an artist to know that these people have the eye to know and plus plus they know the effort that has gone into my making a piece or any of your artists yeah yeah and so a perfect example is Kristen's work 
Can we pick this up? Piece? Yeah. Let me get out of the way. So, so this is one of one of Kristen's pieces. Kristen, if you don't monster. mind, we're just talking about. <laughs> forget the cat for. Yeah, forget that. <laughs> we want to talk about. I was just telling Eric how comforting it is for me to know other artists are working on my work because yeah. I, you know, what it takes to get to a piece like this. So yeah. this is your work, highly, highly detailed. Yeah, so maybe to a fault. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I mean, that's 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 a Gila monster, right? Yeah. And yeah. so you did your own patina, you do your own styrations in the rocks and everything yeah so and what inspired you to do that um well i've you know lived in arizona my whole life and there's a lot of lizard artwork but i've never really seen a gila uh -huh. monster which is kind of unique to the area that we sure. live in although i haven't seen one in prescott yeah um but so i, I decided to to sculpt it um and obviously they're so well known for how beaded they look yes. almost like a, a beaded purse or something yeah but um, I discovered after I started it, maybe that's why I hadn't seen too many because that amount of detail took a long time. <laughs> exactly. And I made each one of these scales by hand. Now, did you have to weld any of this together um, through this, all that texture? Um, under The legs were welded on and underneath the chin is welded on. But um, you can't see, no, you, you cannot can't. tell. You can tell, um, I think Jefferson chased this and he did a really excellent job yes. just covering up the, uh, the weld lines. So. Well, you did a great job matching it. Well, there's a case in point of, as to why I love other artists working on my work. Yeah. So with that said, let's yeah. get you back to work over on Simba. Yeah. So, and she's, so Kristen has been doing patinas for like 16 years now. Really? So yeah, she's, she's patinaed terrific. thousands of pieces. Yeah. Um, hundreds of mine. Hundreds of yours, yeah. Yeah. So this one started just like the other that we showed. And you can see where the liver of sulfur black is yes. put here. On the you toes. can see where it was on here, and it's kind of showing through subtly on the face. Now, Eric, explain why it looks chalky and light. Well, we're putting, as the mountain lions are colored, we're putting the white color mm -hmm. towards the bottom. Yes. And then on top, you see the bronze showing through. But we've taken a chemical um, called bismuth nitrate. Which is the white, okay. Yeah. So I've, we've squirted some of that on there, and that that creates like yeah. an extra layer of depth in the coloring. It looks a little chalky right now because the piece hasn't been finished and yes. lacquered and So waxed. it really comes to life and all those rich translucent colors become that way from the sealing and the waxing at the life. Yeah, last so stage. let's spray some water on there. This will show you what it's gonna look like with, oh, look at the difference. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that, that shows you how, see that bronze coming through? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the shine. So it's got the shine. And you'll probably go through even as it shields and you'll highlight or even darken some areas to attention uh, to the So, Kristen, you want to turn that board down a little and talk about what you're thinking and what you're working on? Uh, yeah, I'm just adding some of this um, bismuth nitrate to the white areas of the cat right now um, just to kind of pop out the markings that the cats naturally have. Um, uh, it's, but you always want to try and maintain some of these bronze highlights that you can see. So we have the white, but you also have that beautiful metal shining through. One thing I like about the way you use the bismuth nitrate, which is the white, a lot of patina artists I've noticed will go a little bit too overboard and they lose the transparency and uh, yeah. that is kind of an opaque chemical to begin with but you're really good at letting the bronze reflect through like Eric just showed when he wet it yeah how you can still see the bronze yeah you you want to maintain the look of the bronze because otherwise the piece of artwork could be made out yeah. of anything it could be ceramic wood but yeah anything. wood yeah so to have that bronze sh that metal showing through it really um, you know kind of uh, you know, gives you that beauty that the yeah. metal have, has all, in, all on its own. So and it shows the texture very, very hey well. Hey guys and girls, we've got Olga. Hey Olga. Medeva, <laughs> masterpiece Medneve. of by masters themselves. She's oh, standing, so. thank you. Welcome, Speaking, Olga. You're a master too, Olga. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see too, if we get too much white, or if we want, if we want the cracks to be more opaque, mm -hmm. we can go back and burnish over the top and bring the bronze back over the top and bring out 
that shine of that the bronze, bronze the but then have the more natural uh, white yeah. underneath. Mm -hmm. So Kristen, if you're working on the face now, are you just darkening some of the areas to, um, for highlights? Yeah, we'll, we'll probably take some dark around the, uh, the mouth and the eyes. You saw the liver earlier. Yeah. So there's uh, already a dark layer underneath that will be more apparent after it's lacquered, just like sure. what you saw with the water mm -hmm. will become more transparent. Okay. But we'll still add a little more dark. There's a lot of layers that go into these because the more layers you put on, the more depth it gives the piece. So and you're going to go back in and probably highlight the eyeballs themselves. Right. So you'll yeah. see them a little bit better. One of the last things we will do is actually shine up the eyes. And then the other, the other main chemical we're using on here is ferric nitrate. The, the browns, about. yeah. Ferric nitrate, we've well, talked see, about that before. There's the eye coming to life. Yeah, you right can there. see the eye popping out just like that. Wow. We'll put we some have Sally Show watching from Edmonds, Washington. Oh, Sally. Says, good to makes me homesick for AZ. You need to come and see us, Sally. Come and see us. Yeah, that's just that what you did, Kristen, is amazing. Yep, bringing that eye out. So, but, and normally that would be the last thing we do because yeah. it can darken during the process and everything. Yes. So we'll let you go back to work, Kristen, and show us some more magic for a few more minutes. Okay. Again, opening up the pores of the metal with the torch. Now Kristen is switching over to the ferric nitrate, which is liquefied iron, right, Eric? This is yeah, the so iron. That's, that's the stuff we make ourselves by taking nails, putting them in a jar. Of nitric acid. Well, we put them in a jar, we take it outside, and then we pour nitric acid in, there's kind of an explosion. Oh, what could go wrong? Yeah. That's no problem. <laughs> so we let that set for just the right amount of time. Yeah. And then strain it and add water, and you come up with your ferric nitrate mix. And now you have the steaming hot nitric acid coming off the bronze. Yeah. Isn't now, look, she's working on the nose. Oh, We're gonna yeah. We're going to give him a little bit of a pinkish nose. Yeah. And that's with ferric. Yep. Wow, look at that. Those small subtleties add up to such an amazing final product. Yeah. And when she starts putting the darker highlights in, like the muzzle markings and yep. the whisker markings and everything else. Yeah. And again, like we saw Travis do, the, the darker eyelashes and so forth will come back out as well. Don't worry too much about the dark because we'll, we'll do that after. We gotta we gotta be careful with the darkening because <coughs> you, you can't can go, go lighter. You can go wrong. Yeah. yeah. So the our, our friends, the clients that, that commission this piece are coming a little bit later today. So we're gonna as we work on this, we know or Eric knows he has to stop on the lighter side, knowing it's probably gonna go a little bit darker because you can't go lighter. Yeah. Now look, she's putting some ferric on the highlights to bring that out. But doesn't that combination of the liver and the ferric and the white near the paw see the, the beauty of that? Yes. And then let's look at that if it had a little. Yeah, look at how that Oh, yeah, out. that's perfect. Well, it's got a lot of depth to it. It's nothing that looks like it's opaque at all. Yeah. And there's even this chemical. This might go a little too far, but this is um, red ferric oxide. So okay. if we wanted to make the nose even a little pinker. Ever so slightly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Add a little of that on there. Now we'll probably, what we do is we go from things being a little brighter and then we bring them back. Yeah. Back and forth and that gives you the depth and the natural look. It's, it's kind of like. a great question here guys from Dave North. He's asking how permanent is the patina finish yeah. they're creating when the piece is outside? Good question, that's for Eric, yes. Well, we're gonna put a special lacquer, um, Nicholas lacquer, that's made for the bronzes outdoor. Mm -hmm. um, now, like anything, if you put anything outside, it's gonna get weathered yeah. and it can change, but it'll be, it's basically very permanent. Now, with their climate, where he and Linda are in Montana, it's not salty brackish air. More than likely, it's gonna be a lot like Arizona. In my yep. experience, is they just get darker yep. more yeah. than anything. Yeah, a little darker, and, and you, you gotta wax them maybe once a year to. Yeah. Uh, but my whole thing is, what I would do is I like to do nothing, and just whatever happens naturally, it just adds to the beauty. Yeah. But it's generally they'll stay pretty, 
close to the original. Yeah, any of the, any of the larger pieces I have at home, I do not wax. I like the same thing you're saying is yeah. just let them oxidize and get rich. It's almost like wood that gets better with age. Yeah, sometimes people bring old bronzes into me and they go, look at this, it's a mess, it's terrible, can you <laughs> fix it? And I go, it's beautiful, what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't touch it. We need to leave that exactly Yeah, like really. This. Hey guys, we have our good, good friend, Jen Farnsworth. Jen, welcome. Staying stunning, you're all such talented and amazing artists. I agree with and you, Jen. And Rosemary viewing also, Rosemary Farnsworth. Oh, good, Fascinating Rosemary. Fascinating to watch a group of skilled artists all work together to help one another. Yeah. Watching from CT. All right. There you go. Go ahead. Well, just think of this too, I mean, as an artist, um, how much confidence I have to have in these people to do this because I can't do it. These people do this every day, every day for... He, he could do it. <laughs> I, I don't think I could. I really couldn't. I mean, I see what you guys do with metal, what Travis and Stan do and everything I else. Could, I could whip Ken into shape in about a month. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that could happen, but... Should, anyway. we go, should, well, should we go into a little of the background of how we got into doing this kind of stuff? Oh, yeah, like do so. Absolutely. Kristen, like, Kristen, what, what uh, got you into this business? Uh-huh. Uh, well, it was kind of a fluke. I was always interested in art, and I always took art classes in school. Um, but I was actually working at an auto body shop, um, prepping cars and to be painted. So I was doing a lot of sanding, um, and which is coincidentally something we do all the time too. And I saw that there was a foundry looking for um, looking to hire some people. And I had no idea what that entailed. But I went in and I told them what I'd been doing, and they hired me on the spot and I was put in the patina room to basically prep which is a lot more wet sanding <laughs> yes and then eventually once they found out I had an art background they put me in the you know to do some patina it was a perfect segue yeah so like a lot of people in this business Kristen was already an artist that's what I was going to ask you were doing art on your own anyway yeah. right yeah, my, my dad's an artist he's an illustrator so yes. I was around art my whole life yeah her dad is a famous Disney comic book artist oh really really that's so, great yeah so and 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 she started at the same place I started working, and I had been doing art my whole yeah. life, too, and got a job there. Yeah. I actually got to help train Kristen at that place. Ah. And then, uh, how long but, has, have you been working here now? Um, I think it's been nine years, I yeah. think. Wow. So we haven't heard Eric Peterson's story either, have we? How you got here? Oh, how, well, how I got here or anyway? <laughs> well, in the patina business. Uh, well, it's, you know, in a sense, kind of similar to Kristen, only... Let's see, I was actually working for Coca-Cola. I was the Coke guy, delivering the Coke oh. to the stores or whatever. And then um, I had a friend that worked at a foundry. And of course, I had been doing art since, high, since uh, I was two years old, mm -hmm. you know, um, drawing, painting, everything like that. So when I went in, they found that out and gave me a job. Interesting. Um, and yeah, they put you right to work. They didn't... Well, what you learn in the foundry business is if you're a strong looking young person, and you have an art background, you'll automatically get... Oh yeah, because you're carrying, or you're creating heavy objects for a living, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's exactly. just, it's a very hard job and most yeah. people can't hack it. Yeah, so there's a lot of true. turnover in the foundry business, a lot of work for very little money. Yeah, yeah. So... Well, yeah. you notice in the parking lot of any of these foundries, I've said this before to Shirley, that uh, none of them are driving big fancy vehicles. It's a labor of love and it's such a hard business to make a living at. Because it's, you're basically selling labor and mm -hmm. selling time, and anything can go wrong, yeah. any, any part of the process. If you get castings that are not up to par, you're the guy that has to fix it. Yeah. And so hours go by and everything else. So we are so happy to show the artists that are behind the scenes. I'm proud of all you guys. And speaking of artists, on the 23rd, two weeks from today, we're going to show our favorite, one of our favorite new artists, Shirley Albrecht is going to do, give a demonstration on her Gordon beads and weaving and everything else. You're going to love it. It's something you've never seen with the combination of many mediums from, you know, gourds to ceramics to everything else you can think of. So anyway, thank you guys for joining us. And I'm so glad you are here today. Eric and everybody else, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll go back to getting this finished up. All get right. all the patina done, lacquer it. And we'll do a segment on this when it's all done. All right. Absolutely.